Hi everyone, it's Bree from Reading Rev. As you are getting started with your year and setting up your Everything Reading Notebooks, I've gotten several questions about how to set these notebooks up and, and how to choose between the two versions. So I thought it'd be quick and easy for me to pop in here and just give you a kind of overview and refresher and answer some of the questions that you've been asking about the Everything Reading Notebook. So by now you probably know that there are two different versions that you get to pick from. You can build an Everything Reading Notebook composition style and build it as you go with your students. I like this version better because there gives me a lot more space and room and I can make it more my own. If, however, this feels overwhelming to you, and especially if you're in year one, that's totally fine. If it feels overwhelming to you and you just wanna print and go, then you can do the binder style. And you can either bind it like this version, or you can just put it in a three ring binder hole punched. Either one is great. Both of these, you can still use the tabs. So I went ahead and printed the tabs using the Avery tabs for that one. For this binder, I just bought the labels that are super cheap and wrote on them. And either way is totally fine, but you can still keep organized that way. Okay, so a couple questions that we're gonna go through today is, first of all, how do you know what to add on what day? And the truth is, Reading Rev is not a scripted program as far as the Everything Reading Notebook goes. It isn't like day 16 you're going to add this concept in comprehension. And on day 21, you're going to add this vocabulary in the vocabulary um, tab. So it's pretty scripted and pretty scoped and, and sequenced out as far as the phonics goes and morphology goes. But the other tabs, the other components are really for you to just use at your discretion with your content at your age group level. So you can use whatever vocabulary you're you're doing in your novels and from your curriculum, you can just add that vocabulary in the vocabulary tab. Same thing goes with comprehension. You are just using these comprehension ideas and strategies, but you're using them however it works with the, with the knowledge building part of your curriculum. And so it may be that everybody's adding a different reading comprehension strategy in different orders, because we're trying to get away from this is prediction week. We're predicting all week. We're trying to get kids instead to see that they are always predicting when reading or always questioning and that that's what good readers do. And this is a place for us to capture, to do some initial teaching and then capture some of that practice. This is um, when we get to the phonics. This is um, also super easy to differentiate because it is a build as you go and you get to decide based on your data and your students how, how what level they need. So this is not necessarily going to look the same for every teacher and every grade level. So for example, if I am introducing the pattern number one, closed syllables, I get to choose what I want the kids to write here. I get to choose exactly what words, and maybe the group of kids I'm working with are all working on the basic list, and they're just working on single syllables. Great. Maybe the kids I'm working with are working on the advanced list, and then they are gonna be doing the exact same pattern, but their, their pages are gonna look very different because they're doing advanced word list. If you're working with the um, Everything Notebook binder style, you have a little bit of flexibility in that as well. You can pick the words that you want. If you need a reference to like what exactly, what words would fit on these lines and what was the dictation sentence that um, I would use, then you are, can print the teacher guide. And the teacher guide is literally filled out exactly um, it's filled out for you with the words that I chose. But remember that this is data driven. So you're not necessarily writing exactly what I have unless this fits the needs of your students. So if you are overwhelmed and it's year one, print the teacher guide, print the everything reading um, binder style, and you can go page by page. Several of you have noticed that this 
is a little bit trickier and doesn't align exactly to the week by week um, third through fifth grade spelling, morphology, and phonics scope and sequence. Here's why. This binder is going through, or this binder style, starts with introducing the vocabulary of phonics. So it starts by saying, these are vowels, these are consonants, these are blends, these are digraphs. You would not go page by page and teach all of those. Instead, you would go back to that page when you get to digraphs. So digraphs is week three. Eat, whether I'm doing it this way or in the binder, I'm only adding these vocabulary terms when it's that week. So on week three, I'm going to either glue the digraph page in, or I'm going to say, now flip back to page nine in your everything reading notebook, and we're gonna talk about what digraphs are. So this is like when they learn the vocabulary, and then they're going to later be able to practice with that pattern. So this binder really goes pattern by pattern, through the sequence. It doesn't go week one, page one, week two, page two, week three, page three. So you're gonna have to kind of use this as go through the scope and sequence of your binder. So here's my, here's my um, student packets and spelling. And I'm going to go in this order, I'm going to really teach it in order of the scope and sequence. But I'm going to use this as a building reference book. And you just have to know, okay, it's digraphs. I'm going to find the page that has the digraphs, right? Does that make sense? Um, okay. Let me think of any other questions that I've had. And um, let me think any other questions. Um, just a quick reminder that this used to be a spelling tab because Phonics was what we could hear and tap out. Spelling are just rules that we have to know. We decided to incorporate the spelling up in phonics now, so we're not differentiating those for students so that we could have a morphology tab. So in your, if you haven't gotten the updated version where it has the morphology tab single, then email me, we can get you a new download link so that it makes more sense with morphology at the back. Lastly, if you are working on morphology, then I made a quick video the other day, but morphology is, again, you are just knowing your students. If your students can take notes and draw puzzle pieces, great, do that. Don't do the printouts. If your students need the visual support and you want to make a whole drawer full of these prefix suffix and um, base word patterns and, and have, them glue cut, um, have them glue them in every week, that's okay too. If you're doing the notebook, you have lots of room throughout the year to go back and add more words as they're finding them in text. So this is an example of where I printed out the template. This is an example of when we just drew that and wrote on our own. So don't be afraid to make the reading notebook exactly what you need it to be. It is not scripted. It is not day by day where it, I say to on day 36, open it up to this page and do this. This is one that I did with fifth graders last year and I decided I didn't need all the fluency vocab comprehension. They were getting that in class. And instead we just did phonics and spelling patterns, morphology and red words. And I completely made this what the kids needed using the reading red resources. Okay, I hope that that helps. If you have any further questions, email me at support at readingrev.com and I will try to get back to you. All right, bye.